The reality of traveling the Scottish Highlands comes with major highs like epic nature, castles, to the castle. and magical places, but also a few lows. It's been a nightmare. We rented a van for this week long journey, and this is the honest truth of it all. Our home for the next week! Normally, I'm on a mission to climb the highest peak in every European country, and that's what brought us to Scotland. But we find that there's so much more to this legendary part of the country. And it all starts in Edinburgh, at the van depot where we started driving on the opposite side of the road. Oh boy. I'm on the left side. I need music. Pretty straight. Are you ready? Oh damn, I don't know how to drive this. <laughs> Thing is here. Blinkers. Oh yeah, everything's on the other side for oh, you. Oh god. You got this. I don't feel comfortable. No? no? You got this, you got this, you got this. In 1.2 miles, we're doing miles now. You're turning left. Weird. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. wrong. Highway sheep. Oh my god, you're so close to the side. I'm not that close, mi amor. I can see the side mirror. I feel close. Yeah, to but the left because side. when I drive on the other side, it's. Oh, you're right. You're right? Yes. Okay, you're essentially gonna do a loop. This kind of looks like a pair of ovaries. Yeah, perfect. First ovary. You're gonna exit A8 Glasgow Road. You're doing great. Are you also nervous? Well, yeah, because I'm so close to like the left curb. In all fairness, my partner, Juan Pablo, is one of the best drivers I know. I'm just a scaredy cat. We made our way through the winding roads towards Fort William. One of the best things about van life is eating, whatever, wherever, before heading out into nature. We had waited for some flooding to pass before we showed up to one of the most magical sites. We are committed Harry Potter fans. We're going to this Glenfinnan viaduct to see the Hogwarts Express. It's actually the Jacobite train. We're hoping it's running today because two days ago it wasn't because okay. flooding in the area. But it should be running because there was guards at the door. There were people parking cars. Yeah. What time is it? Uh, Hogwarts uh, Express time. I hope it's, there's no dementors around. <laughs> the Jacobite train, also famously known as the real-life Hogwarts Express, was opened in 1901. Originally, it was meant to help connect more rural parts of the Highlands. Nowadays, it's a pretty cool tourist attraction, as this was the actual place and train used in the Harry Potter films. It can be seen on the viaduct twice per day, so you can make the walk up the hill in the morning or the afternoon. I don't know if you guys have seen the blue car of Harry Potter, but it says there that it went actually missing in 2002. And the little sign says, if you see the car, please report it to the trail station. <laughs> I'm super excited. It's really cool that there's tons of people. It was quite late at this point, so we thought we missed it until off in the distance we heard the Steam Beauty's horn. Weird, maybe but it was one of the biggest highlights. With the weather being a bit unpredictable, we drove to a trailhead pretty close to Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in Scotland and the UK. The mission was to walk through Scottish Jurassic Park, AKA Nevis Gorge to Steel Falls. Kinda looks like Jurassic Park. <laughs> The drive itself was gorgeous. There are waterfalls carving paths through the hills on your left and right. Ready? <laughs> it sure looks sexy, okay? Ready? <laughs> People in the UK tend to call this a walk, which I never understood as a Canadian. Yeah. We are on our way to a waterfall. Apparently when the conditions aren't that great for hiking Ben Nevis, you go to waterfalls because you're probably going to get wet anyways. This to me is a hike because we'll be traversing terrain that is tricky for some and requires a good fitness level. 
Maybe it's a walk for people in these parts because it's so easy. I don't know. Anyways, being out in nature is all I care about. There's something rejuvenating about spending time outside. Oh my god! It's actually insane! As we got closer, I couldn't believe the scene in front of me. The waterfall was massive and so beautiful. This is when the rain really came down. We were drenched. Juan Pablo decided it would be the perfect time to cross the wire bridge. Just remember you have to come back. What, what's over there? Because if he fell in, he was already soaked. I, did, I can't hear you say again. Worried that parts of the trail would get washed away, we hurried back to the van. At the time, we thought the wet clothes wouldn't be a big deal for the hike up Ben Nevis the next day. But, as we would soon discover, the heating system in the van was on the fritz. Oh, what a mess. So remember, this is reality, not a magical fairy tale YouTube video. After having the van for two days, we were told that the heating didn't work because we'd run out of propane. Weird, you might think. I thought so too. We hoped that after peak 16 the next day, we could get a new propane tank. It was an unexpected day that I can't wait to share with you in the next video. So subscribe if you haven't already, my friends. All good? I think so. Yay! We have our own converted van back in Spain. No sign so far. Uh, Fuck. So we thought Juan Pablo would be able to fix the issue with the heating system. He thought he fixed it, but um, I think there's something happening. So the way they have their van set up, in case you're curious, is they have a gas tank at the back. And that's what is doing the, the heating. So I'm wondering if we've actually just run out of gas, which would be crazy because we've been in the van for three days now. I mean, we've cooked every meal. We've had a hot shower each, um, put on the heating because it was really cold the first two days. Like we couldn't really do much, but anyways. Hoping the next day we would have better luck. We left the Fort William area for another where we thought they'd have propane. And we happened to see there was a castle. We're on our way to see the castle. <laughs> it's reopened. It was closed because of the crazy wind gusts. This is a proper castle. That's probably why they closed it, huh? Yeah, this is crazy. This is my first castle. That's probably why you're so excited. The first structure was built in the 13th century. Several hundred years later, in the 1700s, the castle became part of the Jacobite uprising. Couldn't bring you inside. Apparently, a family actually lives here so there's part of the castle that is blocked off and every once in a while they come and stay here how cool is that you can actually say i live in a castle i don't live here full time because come on a group of spanish soldiers were supporting the jacobites and waiting for weapons to arrive when the english heard about this they bombarded the castle and eventually blew it up what do you think your first castle experience you want to get me on my phone cut that part hmm? <laughs> what um Amazing. In 1911, the ruins were purchased and after 20 years, it was restored to what you see. Again? <laughs> after that excitement, we nearly forgot about our propane issue. We're not having very good luck. The fuel light has just come on and we've pulled over at this petrol station and I don't know if they have diesel. We know that we have two bars. We're not exactly sure how far that'll take us. No luck. No? No. What? There's a technical issue. And we're right in the middle. So if we go back, it's 30 kilometers. If we go that way, it's also 30 kilometers. And it just broke, she said. No, really? Yeah. Oh, no. Towards Loch Ness. Yeah, I mean, we can take a quick detour because... 23 miles. Okay, let's try that one. Okay. 23 should be fine. Right? I yeah. mean, there's two. I'm gonna go slow and I'm gonna have no AC, so. There's two bars. We had our fingers and toes crossed we would make it to fill up on fuel. 
The last thing you need in a foreign country is to be stuck in the middle of nowhere. I was very nervous. Even though I was technically on vacation, this was giving me heavy duty anxiety. We've done van life full time before, so we know these things come with the territory. But still, a bit intense all at once. I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> Turn left up here. And the station's gonna be on the left. Oh boy, please work. I hope there's no technical issues with this one. If not, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, buddy! Lights are on. Yeah, buddy! Okay, this is promising. <laughs> okay, don't get excited yet, because we thought we were okay last time. It, okay, I see, like, money stuff. <laughs> How much do you want me to put on? $2.40. There's nothing more annoying than being, not being a whole number. Oh! Victory. Woo 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 woo! Who got fuel? And pretzels. These are sour cream and chive pretzels for celebration. Now we needed propane so we didn't freeze tonight. We've been driving around the country. I know it's a small country, but we've been driving around looking for a place that will let us swap the propane tank that we have. And it's been a nightmare. And so we've come to this tiny little town. We called ahead and asked, and she's like, yep, you can swap, but you have to bring in an empty tank. I'm like, well, we definitely have an empty tank. Or at least that's what we thought. <laughs> it's been a bit of an odyssey. Yeah, I hope it works because if not, I don't know where we're gonna get another one of these. We need it to stay warm at night. It's gonna get down to five degrees Celsius. You won't believe it. We switched the tank and it still didn't work. They checked the one we gave them and found that it was full. She refunded us and gave us our tank back. Hi. Anyone coming that way? Uh, no. Nobody, not a soul. We were pretty frustrated, so we didn't film the rest of the night. This is where we slept. <laughs> what? This is so cool. We stayed here last night and I'm just figuring out how to check out and it works on an honesty box. Finally, we'd had a warm night of sleep because Juan Pablo fixed the heating system. He figured out how to do a whole system reset. Oh, look, we don't do Wi-Fi, we do chit chat. Yes, love it. Such a clever thing as well to like have reception in something that used to be functional and then turning it into something else that functions. Just making the payment here, 10 pounds per night plus five pounds to use the electrical hookup, which is pretty cool. I think this is the first time in all of our years of van life of using an electrical hookup because we have solar power normally and it's it's awesome. Yeah, and I'm gonna add in something a little bit special in the envelope, because why not? Got these stickers and a little pin. I don't know if they watch YouTube, but I'll just leave them a little note in case they do want to watch. I really love that we can do like this kind of honesty box thing. Like it's really special. I love being in a country where that's a possibility. It really restores my faith in humanity. Well, Juan P is the real MVP. We had an issue and last night we tried to empty the gray water tank and the normal valve where you just switch it Horizontal, vertical, didn't work. We messaged them and then they told us there's an emergency valve and open up the valve, which is really gross. Paid, empty gray water and the sun shining, we were off for another day of exploring in beautiful Scotland. Another castle. I live for these moments where I'm waiting for you. Oh my god, just hold on. <laughs> 1600 hours later to the castle! The first view of the castle. We're in. It's 1450 for one person enter. And fun fact, in case you're gonna go to 
all the castles, including Edinburgh Castle, Stirling Castle, and this castle. And then you get an Explorer member pass for £44. We're not going to go to Stirling, so we didn't get that one. To the castle! Urquhart Castle sits on Loch Ness, where the famous Nessie monster is said to live. As far as I know, it has nothing to do with any mythical creatures. Its history is full of battles, and even more with Jacobites. This is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, the legend that really caught my attention comes from the 1100s, where a Gaelic nobleman secretly got into cahoots with local witches to have them build the castle. Oh, wow. My attention was diverted to the lake. There were no signs of Nessie, but another beast was lurking and beckoning us. Tactical stop. This is something that I really like about bad life. You can stop pretty much anywhere and eat anywhere, especially here. It's a little dessert. I think it's called a tea cake. <laughs> the sound effects and everything. <laughs> Since we did a little detour, we were close enough to Inverness to do a distillery tour at Eula Beast. To be fair, I'm not a big whiskey person. Just keep that in mind. Sure, I wasn't into the taste of whiskey, but I love learning how they make it. They're pros, and our guide really made the tour. They're only using 18 of. We looked a little bit there. I know. I left it for you. So this one, it feels like if I went like this that fire would be coming out of my mouth. Um, I really like that. Yeah? Yeah. What does it taste like for somebody who likes whiskey? It's like wood and it's really good. This is a pretty brand new distillery, slash brewery, so they still have to wait a bunch of years so they can sell their whiskey, but they have their initial version or their mother version that they're getting people to taste. Uh, I think I, I really like it. Then we have the white witch lemonade. <laughs> it's my favorite. It tastes like chocolate. It tastes like if a Guinness and a Cortado had a baby, it would be this beer. This is a quick intermission from the tour. Just to tell you guys that if you wanted to support Natasha's journey, hit that subscribe button right there. Make sure you like the videos. And if you're interested, you can also click in the link below and check out her Patreon where she posts exclusive content. Last week she was shipping a bunch of postcards to her patrons. Uh, so if you're into that uh, and you want to support her, uh, check it out. It was such a good time. Those guys are awesome. Richard made the tour. Not a big fan of whiskey, but big fan of beer. Highly recommend. I'm a big fan of Richard. Yeah, Richard's awesome. <laughs> we love you, Richard. There was one thing left to do. See a Highland cow cutie. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hello, sweeties. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Oh, you're so majestic. I love you so much. We didn't see a Loch Ness monster, but we saw this cutie pie. I would come and live in Scotland just to have one of these little cuties. Okay, bye. Road tripping around the Highlands was the best way to see the area. And I know we'll be back. The nature, the people, the vibe. It's just here. That's not it for the Scotland series. There's still one more coming, so stay tuned. And in the meantime, check out the Ireland videos just across the pond. Also, I've just finished writing the first guidebook for Karen's Hall, Ireland's Highest Peak. 
It's perfect for time saving if you're planning that hike. It's available on my website or for free for patrons. Well, it's included in the membership. Happy adventuring friends and see you very soon.